As you all know, I have been harping on my channel for several months now on the grave problems that our nation, the United States of America, is facing. I've been talking about the problem of the American empire and its expansion via foreign unconstitutional wars. I have been talking about our debt that is crippling us uh, over $34 trillion uh, currently and climbing. And of course, I've been talking about the problem at our borders, this problem of illegal immigration, not immigration, illegal immigration. We are absolutely being invaded on a daily basis uh, particularly at our southern borders. In the last video, I gave you some raw numbers, some real-time data, which supports uh, the thinking that we are being invaded. Things have reached, as you know, if you've been watching the news, a complete and utter fever pitch. So let's review as to what has been going on and is going on down uh, in particular in the state of Texas, or the, if you prefer, the Republic of Texas. As you know, uh, Texas border agents and Texas uh, authorities uh, have been told by the federal government, the, the American federal government, to remove uh, razor wire that was being used to secure the border. And this led to a court case which made its way to the Supreme Court. <clears throat> Earlier this week, the Supreme Court heard the case and they sided with the federal government with a vote of five to four, ostensibly telling the state of Texas to cut the razor wire and take it down. And this drew a response from Governor Greg Abbott and the state of Texas, uh, and it led to what is now being basically an act of defiance with the state of Texas basically telling the federal government we're not going to do that. We're going to protect our border as they have every right to do is, and I'm going to go into more detail about why they have that right here in just a few minutes. So we have a real showdown here <clears throat> and I will maintain that this is actually a good thing. It's a healthy thing. It is something that needs to happen. You've got the federal government telling a state what to do, and you have a state pushing back um, on what the federal government is telling it to do and what the Supreme Court has declared they must do. So if you're the state of Texas, if you're Governor Greg Abbott, and I got a lot of issues with Governor Abbott, but on this, uh, and a little, little sidetrack, my main issue with Greg Abbott is this. He's been in office for years and he could have done a lot more about this problem than he has done. Be that as it may, having said that, we are where we are now, and he's actually doing the right things, as far as I can tell, in basically uh, defying the, Fed, the, the, the uh, decision of the Supreme Court, and he is uh, not going to cut down the razor wire. As a matter of fact, he has uh, the National Guard now on the border, and several states, including my own, are sending uh, National Guard troops to uh, the Texas border for assistance. So here's what we're looking at. There is a threat, and how real it is, I do not know, but there's a lot of chatter out there about the option on the table with uh, the occupant of the White House, Joe Biden, that option being and he can do this if he chooses to, choose to do this, that option being for him to federalize the Texas National Guard, which would ostensibly make the Texas National Guard agents of the federal government. Now let that sink in for just a moment and process that information, because what does that mean? Now this is not an unprecedented action. It's happened before at various times in our country where a president, as he is authorized to do, can uh, federalize a state's National Guard. This happened in the state of Alabama in the 1960s. You may recall uh, the University of Alabama had uh, no black students. 
but a black student was wanting to uh, enroll at the University of Alabama, and it led to a big showdown on the steps of, uh, of one of the buildings at the university. The governor at the time was Governor George Wallace, <clears throat> and he was defying uh, the president, President Kennedy, uh, who resorted to federalizing National Guard troops in Alabama to essentially clear the path so that this uh, black student could enroll in the university. And in the end, Kennedy won that battle. <clears throat> Wallace had to back down, and Kennedy enforced um, his ruling. And uh, that opened up the university to uh, people of various skin colors. Okay, that's one issue. You can set that aside right now, and you can argue whether that was right or wrong. But here we have the issue of the of Joe Biden potentially federalizing Texas National Guard troops or any other state's National Guard troops that are down on the southern border trying to help Texas out. Now, how would you like to be a National Guardsman on the southern border representing your state. Let's say you're a Texan and you're in the Texas National Guard, and one day you get the orders from Washington that you have been federalized and you're going to have to carry out the will and the dictates and the demands of the federal government, and you're going to have to comply as a Texan with the recent Supreme Court decision. Noodle that out for a moment and think about it. If you comply with your orders as a guardsman, you are instantly going to be, in a sense, at war with your fellow Texans. Does this sound familiar to anyone? Does this have the scent of the Civil War on it? You remember the Civil War, the war between the states, the war of northern aggression, when basically you, you could conceivably have brothers cousins, aunts, or uh, uncles, and, ne and nephews fighting against each other. You remember General Lee? He was a Virginian, and he decided he could have gone either way. He went to uh, uh, the military academy. <clears throat> he was highly decorated, and he was a Virginian. But he chose to represent his state in that war, and rightly so, I would maintain. But here you had potential family members, now suddenly enemy combatants. Now, if you're in the Texas National Guard, I'm going to assume, I'm assuming that you would be in favor of protecting your, your state, your beloved home state, from invasion. But if you get orders from Washington that you've got to go cut the wire and obey your commander-in-chief, what are you going to do? Do you see where this is leading to? On the one hand, you've got Joe Biden telling you to do one thing, and you've got Greg Abbott telling you to do the opposite thing. What are you going to do? You're the guardsman. Who are you going to obey? Who's right in this issue, and who is wrong? You know, I am generally speaking... A law-abiding citizen. I'm not out to make trouble for anybody on purpose other than what I do on my channel. I work. I'm a gainful uh, member of society. I pay my taxes. I'm not a rabble-rouser other than on here. You know, I'm, I'm a good citizen in good standing with my state government, city government, federal government, as far as I know. I want what's best for my town, my county, my state, my country. But if I get an if if I'm a guardsman, which I am not, but if I am a guardsman and let's say I'm in Texas and the president orders me to comply with the recent Supreme Court decision and go to my state's border and start cutting wire, what would I do? What would you do? That's where we are, folks. That's where we are. So you see the problem because the people in Texas can see what's going on. The people in America can see what's going on. 
this is a time where you have to decide whether you're going to do the right thing or the thing you've been ordered to do, which may be the wrong thing. If it's the, the mandate of the commander in chief, it is the wrong thing. This is a problem. This is a burgeoning conflict. It's already a conflict. This is, do you want to use the word war? This is pitting American citizens against the American government, wittingly or not. This is where we are. Now, I think this is actually, in the long run, a good thing because this is going to bring some clarification to this issue and really to a bigger issue, which is the issue of governmental overreach and government intrusion into our lives, which is something I've been railing against for decades. This federal government is too big for its britches. It can't handle its own affairs, but it presumes to tell us all how to live, how to think, where to go, what to say, what to believe who to pay, what to finance. And we're all just supposed to stand in line and be good little obedient citizens. But that is not the essence of what a real American is like. A real American is a person who loves liberty, who loves freedom, who loves righteousness, and who stands for the right thing, even when his government is at odds with him. Right is always right, and wrong is always wrong. And in this case, the federal government is wrong. Just a side note here, I was talking with Marino a while ago, and I said, this, this is what doesn't make sense to me. On a political level, and I understand Joe Biden's not running anything. He doesn't know what's going on. He can't tie his own shoes. He can't string together a coherent sentence. But to the people who are handling him, the people behind the scenes who are actually pulling the strings, you have to ask this question. Where is the political benefit for you in what you are doing? Do you not want Biden to get reelected to office? Do you not understand you're on the wrong side of history with this deal? Do you not understand how unpopular this is with the American people, by and large, the ones that are paying attention? Or is it that you just depend on those who don't pay attention? Maybe that's it. This is political suicide if, you, if you're asking me, and it makes no sense. But you have backlash from the Obama administration toward the Abbott administration in the state of Texas. You've got Biden telling Texas you're going to do this, and you've got Abbott telling Biden we're not going to do this, and you've got several states who are siding with Abbott on this matter. So God bless them. So this is where we are. We are headed directly into a conflict. We're headed into a showdown. We're heading into a Fort Sumter, South Carolina moment. Whose side are you on? Now, what do you do if you're a Texan? What do you do if you are Greg Abbott? What do you do to remedy all this. There is a remedy to this. And do you know what that remedy is? There is a remedy because on the one hand, you've got the Supreme Court, which is in theory supposed to render their decisions based on their interpretation of the Constitution, based on the Constitution or how they interpret. Of course, a lot of them don't know what that means or a lot of them just don't care what that means. But that is the task of the Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution and render their, their decisions thusly. But they are way off base with this recent decision, at least five of them are, including John Roberts and Amy Coney Barrett. So what is the remedy? When the federal government tells a state to do something a state does not want to do, what can you do? Do you have any choice or do you just have to simply obey? Do you just have to hold your nose and do what they say? No, you do not. The remedy is found in one word. That word is nullification. Nullification. This is 
a remedy that is given to the states. Now, I want to read for you a few words from a man who hits the nail on the head. And I want you to bear with me because this is so important. And I want you to listen at these words and see if they ring true with you. When the Roman Empire was in decline, it had difficulty maintaining its borders from the barbarian hordes. True, they weren't all pillaging. Many were migrating to escape other barbarians, but the Romans weren't able to repel or withstand the influx. The Romans ended up having many of these barbarians serve in Roman legions as mercenaries in exchange for citizenship. If that sounds a little familiar, it should, as some in Congress have been floating the idea of exchanging citizenship for military service for illegal aliens. The United States of America is following a similar pattern. However, we are not experiencing an organic decline as the Romans did for various reasons. Instead, immigration and illegal immigration are one of many pieces of the puzzle puzzle in what is the deliberate just deliberate destruction of the United States. The 1965 Immigration Act opened the doors to America and began a process of transformation. This ended what was basically a 50-year moratorium on immigration. This policy change coincided with an unofficial policy change of deliberately not securing the borders. On the surface, it gave corporatist Republicans cheap voters and Democrats a perpetual flow of underclass vote, an an underclass vote. On a deeper level, this fueled a long-term Marxist agenda to overthrow the United States as a part of the globalist agenda for world government. The United States Supreme Court is obviously held captive. The Founding Fathers believed in such a remedy as evidenced by the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions. An even more compelling example was when when the state of Wisconsin nullified the United States Supreme Court decision. The state of Wisconsin passed a law and refused to return freed fugitive slaves back to their owners. Did you know that? Governor Abbott should immediately call a special emergency session of the Texas legislature for the purpose of passing legislation nullifying the Supreme Court's decision. The state of Texas has a basic right to protect its border from a foreign invasion. There is absolutely no justification for the existence of the federal government if it refuses to protect the border and repel a foreign invasion. Utterly ridiculous. The military can be dispersed throughout Washington, D.C., yet can't protect the border. It can be done. It has been done. One may say there is legal and historical precedence. The campaign of asymmetrical warfare being waged against us requires asymmetrical resistance. This invasion is designed to overwhelm the system, segment the country, and create division and chaos, as well as disidentification with the idea of being an American. This makes it easier to submit the population to global tyranny. There you have it. Those are the words of Dr. Joseph Sanson, Ph.D. This is the answer. What he is saying is what Abbott should do. Call the legislature, take a vote, and nullify the Supreme Court decision. There is precedent. I just cited you an example from the state of Wisconsin. States can nullify the Supreme Court. States can nullify such behavior as is being exhibited by the American federal government. This is, to me, the sum of the war between the states. 
A lot of people get sidetracked on the issue of slavery, and I'm not saying it wasn't an issue. What I am saying is there's an old saying, prior to the Civil War, people said the United States are. After the Civil War, people said the United States is. But we are 50 states, and we do have the right to conduct our affairs in a way that we see fit. And if the way that we choose to handle our state affairs is at variance with what the federal government wants us to do, orders us to do, tells us what to do, the states have a remedy, and that remedy is nullification. This is the state telling the federal government to go stick it where the sun don't shine. And I damn well think it's high time the state of Texas leads the way. Do you agree? This is a showdown. This boiling cauldron of illegal immigration is boiling over. This thing is reaching a fever pitch because you have an incompetent, feckless man in the White House who refuses to do his most basic, fundamental duty as president. He sits back while we are being invaded on a daily basis, not only doing nothing, but aiding and abetting these criminals. And it is way past time that we talked about, that states began talking about the N-word, nullify. It is time to nullify. Those are my thoughts. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and give me your comments down below. This is Trailer Trash Tim, and I'll see you soon.